Hey guys, Sean Dub here, back with another Cinema 4D quick tip. I recently got my hands on R20, so I thought, let's have a look at how we can use these new tools to create some fun typography. I wanted to share a bit of my workflow, so we're gonna start with a sketch to sort of form the basis of our idea, and then we'll take that and use the new volume modeler, a bit of the field system, and we're gonna get some real fun results. All right, let's jump in, guys. All right, so we're having a quick look at how we can make typography using the new updates in Cinema 4D R20. All right, all right, so I screwed on some paper and I wanted this black on black text is what we're gonna try and set up. So first up, I'm just gonna fix this image a little bit. So I'm gonna throw levels into my scene and just really crush those, and just really bring those whites in. And just really crush those whites, blow them out, and there we go. Now we've just got our text and that's looking a bit easier for us. What I quite like is how this on was shaping. This is something I like to do is just scribble out the text I'm after. I'm certainly no expert when it comes to this sort of stuff. So I like to just scribble, keep it free flowing and then bring it into Photoshop later and, and, and I'll comp together the characters that I find work well together. So I've made that selection. I'm gonna right click and say make selection. And I'm, I'm then gonna invert that with Command Shift I. Then we want this on its own layer. So I'm just, with Command and Shift still selected, I'm just gonna hit J and that'll drop it onto its own new layer there. And we can grab that and move it around. All right, I'm just gonna frame up our canvas again. So what I'm thinking, we'll just use these two BLK characters. They're the ones that we'll, they're the ones that we'll use to try this exercise. So I'm just gonna zoom in here, make another selection, make sure we're on our background layer, then right click, make selection again, invert it, duplicate it to its own new layer. And you know what, just for this setup, we're just gonna use these two. I'm just filling our background there, just so we've got our, just to lose that transparency. And now we can start framing up these characters. You can see, you can see when we start to, if we wanted to overlap, we're actually not gonna be able to see through that white background on the same layer. So what I'm gonna do is actually make a copy of my levels here, pull that beneath our layer, I'm just gonna merge each layer with the levels. And then what we can do is change them to something like multiply and they'll, and they'll show through nicely for us. So let's just rename this here, what do we got? This is our BLK, this is our on. And what I'm gonna do is just make a copy of that BLK using command J and then I'll just pull this beneath our on. And now you can see we can just start framing up the finish that we're after. Now keeping in mind, this is purely a reference for us to draw out that path. Great, so now that we've got this set, let's say we're happy with what we've got here. I like to just lower our, I, I like to just lower our opacity a bit. Just, it just softens it a bit and it's gonna make it easier, and it's gonna make it easier to recognize where our path is. Great, so now let's zoom in. And what I like to do is create an individual path for each line. For example, this B here, we'll draw one for the stem and then another for the arches. So let's do that. Just got my pen tool here and I'm just, my aim is to just try and, my aim is to just almost follow the center of our pen line there. Then we can just start to draw it another path for the arches of the B there. And great. Just hitting command to click off that spline and that'll allow us to start to draw another spline. So what I did is just follow that process for all the other paths here, just aiming for the center, just aiming for the center of that pen line, not being too, not being too concerned about where my points end up, just doing this nice and quickly. Great, so once we're happy with how our paths here are starting to end up, what we're gonna do is hold Shift Command and just go back and select all those paths that we've created. Then we can come up to File, Export, and we're gonna export these paths to Illustrator. Once you've done that, save that, and we're gonna bring those, we're gonna bring that path into Cinema. Great, what, once you drop it in, you might realize you need to zero out its position depending on, depending on the size of your canvas that you're working on in Photoshop. You might find you're in a bit of a funky position when you bring it in, but you can just zero that out there. Great, so as you spin around your spline, you're gonna notice it's it's coming flat along that X-plane. 
But what we really want to do is create some nice depth and intertwining of these splines. So as I curl down my fold here, you can see because we drew each of those paths individually, we've now got a path for each of those characters or each of those strokes, depending on how many, how many made up each character. So for example, I'm going to grab my second path here, and that's the arches of this B. And if I go into my point mode, this is, this is what's going to allow us to start to manipulate this spline and create some nice depth. So I'm just going to grab this middle point here, frame it up a little bit, and I'm going to hit R for my rotate tool. And just by rotating this around, now we can start to create some nice depth. So this is what I do. I work along, along this spline, rotating those points. And what you might even like to do is grab this start point and hit E for your move tool. And then you can just move it along a little bit. And now we're pushing that back in space. And we might like to do the same with the end point, but perhaps go the other way. And nice, really simply, we're creating some depth in that spline. And because they were brought in individually, we can really just, it really allows you to focus just on that character and not get too caught up and not get too caught up with the entire scene at once. Great, so once you worked along your spline, hopefully you'll end up with something like this. You can see as I zoom in here, we've now got all these characters with great, with great depth in the actual scene just by rotating and moving those points. Great, so if you're familiar with cinema, you've probably got to this point before. You've probably had a play with splines and creating depth within them. And what, you, and what you might have typically done from here is drop it into something like a sweet nerve or a spline wrap to create, the, to create depth. But what we're going to have a look at is creating this using volumes. So we'll come up to our volume tab at the top here. And I'm going to select a volume builder. And all we need to do is feed our spline into that volume builder. And instantly we've created and we've created what I referred to as voxels, which are essentially 3D pixels wrapping around our spline. Now at the moment we've got quite a high voxel size, which is which is what's giving us this low quality feedback. So essentially this has been referred to similar to your similar to your pixel count. So essentially, so if you think about it, the, the smaller the pixels are within your image, the higher the quality it's going to be. And that's the same here with our voxel size. So if I just drop this down to something like two. You can now start to see where you can now see we've started to up the quality here. So within the volume builder here, you can see we've got access to our spline. So I'm going to click on that, and rather than using a sweep, we can actually use the we can actually use the volume builder to start to actually generate geometry here, and that's based on this radius. So similar, if we were going to sweep a circle along this spline, we can reduce this to something like five, and just like in a sweep nerve, it's going to give us a tighter wrap on our spline there. And so what's resulting in these spheres is because of the density. So what I like to do is just bump that up to something like one and automatically it's, it smooths that out for us. So I'm just going to frame this up a little bit, drop a camera in so we can come back to this spot. But I'm just going to zoom in for a second and show you what's going on here. But I just want to zoom in here so you can see exactly what's going on. Now at the moment, if I hit render, we're, actually, we're not going to see anything. This is similar to using, say, a matrix object. So what we need to do with our volume builder selected. Let's hold down Alt, come up to volume, and we're gonna feed it into a volume mesher. And this is what's gonna mesh that builder and now give us something that we can render. Now where I'm absolutely loving this compared to something like using a sweep nerve is you can see where our, is you can see where our spline start to touch. We now get this smooth, almost meta ball finish. So let's jump back into our camera for a second. And you can see now wherever our, wherever our spline start to interact we now get this nice smooth organic blend between those meshes and this is now and I think this looks absolutely amazing and to do something like this before quite complex as far as needing to actually go in and start to sculpt in that smoothness whereas now we get it instantly we can actually take this a bit further within the volume builder we've got these we've got these modifier layers so if I add a smooth layer you can see we're almost disappearing here so what I'm going to do is just increase our radius a bit. So we've got a bit of a thicker blob here. And now you can see what that smooth layer is doing. If I turn that off, you can see what that smooth layer is doing as I toggle it on and off here. We get this nice goopy text and these, and we can get these really cool results. As well as the smooth layer, we also have the reshape layer. I'll just turn my smooth layer off so you can see what's going on with just the reshape layer. And in this case, you can see it's essentially bulged our text, but this will what this aims to do, as, as the name suggests, 
is reshape the layer that's actually beneath it. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to come into my smooth layer. We also have a few different ways we can treat the smoothing here. At the moment, we're using a Gaussian blur, so we're getting a nice smooth, getting a nice smooth surface across it, across our text. But if we change this to something like mean curvature, what this is going to try and do is maintain that finish, but just smooth the joins a little bit. So we have a lot of control over the different looks we can achieve here. I'm going to change mine back to Gaussian. And what's fun is we can start to stack multiple objects within this volume builder here. So for example, I'm just going to add a cube into my scene and just scale it out so it fills our viewport here. And I'll jump into my four views, make it a little bit skinnier, and just pull it back behind my text a bit. There you go. You can see we're just, just intersecting with the top of the B there. I'm just going to scale this out a bit more. I'm going to feed this into the volume builder. And straight away, that's merged it into the geometry with our text. And what we can even do is take that, take our cube, move it beneath our smooth layer within our hierarchy here, and now that's going to take effect on that as well. All right, so already with a simple scene, we're creating some fun results here, but I want to take it a bit further. I want to see, I want to show you how we can also animate things within the volume builder. So I'm going to remove our spline from the builder for a second and just turn off our cube. And what we're going to do to animate this spline, we're going to use a Mo spline object. So come up to MoGraph, down to Mo spline, we'll add that into our scene. And the first thing we're going to do is change our mode from simple to spline. And then we can come over to the spline tab and feed in our spline. Let's hide our let's hide our reference spline for a second. And now we're essentially and now we're essentially reproducing our original spline within Mo spline. So with our Mo spline object selected, you can see we can actually start to increase its width here. And now if we feed this into our volume builder, this is actually what's driving how thick our text is going to be. So let's come into our volume builder for a second. Select our Mo spline and you can see this too has a density. So let's change this to something like one. And there, we can, and there we go, we're now starting to smooth out our text again. So now we're essentially back to where we were before using our original spline. But by using a Mo spline, now we can use effectors to animate this text on. But not only that, we can use, we can use effectors to now start to further enhance the shape of our text. For example, I'm going to drop a step effector into our scene with our spline selected. And this is affecting our scale of these splines. And you can see, even though it's collapsed the spline as one, it still, it still recognizes them as individual segments and it's, gonna, and it's gonna scale each segment, each segment independently. So what we might like to do is come over to our effector curve here. And you can see, maybe we'll shrink it in the middle and it can just balloon out a little bit at the tips of each letter. Great, let's also turn back on our cube. Great, let's also turn back on our cube. And what you might see now is we'll need to move our Mo spline also beneath, also beneath that smooth object to start to smooth it out again. What we might like to do is just pull that smooth back a little bit so it's not as intense. All right, so let's animate this spline on. Let's grab ourselves. I'm just gonna grab a plane effector. I'm gonna turn off position for a second and just enable scale. Let's select uniform scale and I'm going to set this to negative one. And hopefully what we'll see, and, what, and hopefully what you'll see is your text disappears. But now we can start to bring our text back on using four lofts and start to play with the new field system. So if we come over to four loft, you're going to notice, you probably notice it's a bit different to what we had before, but it's so much more powerful. So first up, first up in this tab here, we've got our field objects, and these are essentially these are essentially the fall off layers that we know and love. So with that selected, let's actually just add a linear field here. And by adding that into our fall off, it's created a linear field object within our scene. And now you can see we can use this linear field to start animating on our text. But what's really powerful now with the field system is we can layer these fall offs to create really complex looks. So we've already added a linear field. Let's go and add a spherical field. And now we've got these two new, 
And now we've got these two field objects here within our fall off system. Just like you might be used to in Photoshop and other soft and other programs like that, is we've got these blending modes. And we've got these blending modes for how we can start to I mean, how we can start to overlay and make the and make multiple field systems blend together. So I'm going to change my spherical field to add here. And now you can see, now you can see essentially what that's done is it's not allowing our linear field to grow where that where that spherical field is. So I don't know why this might be a particular look you're after, but I hope you can see, but at least you can see that it's fun to add these new systems and we can animate them all independently. What we might even like to do, let's turn off that linear field and we'll just play with our spherical field for a second. Now at the moment, everything's happening on the outside of our spherical field, but what if we wanted it to happen, or what if we wanted it to happen the opposite way? Well, that's where we can come down and use our modifier layers. And what I'm going to do is select this and come up to invert. And what this is going to do is invert anything beneath it. And just like that, now what's now whatever is appearing only within our spherical field is showing up within our volume builder. I'll hide our most spline just so we can't see those guides and it makes it a bit, you can see it a bit clearer of exactly what's appearing within that builder. And now we can do something super simple like just scale up this spherical field until it captures our entire text. Somewhere about there looks good. Let's just go 250 to keep it at round numbers and I'll add another keyframe. Let's play this back. You might find your playback's a little bit slow. Keeping in mind it is calculating those volumes each frame. So what you might want to do is just reduce that voxel count as you're doing these tests. All right, this is looking pretty cool. I don't know if you can hear my computer is humming at the moment, but but, keep, but keeping in mind, we are using a voxel count that's at two at the moment. So we've got decent quality in here. We could reduce it a bit and get, and get some faster playback. Now, if we wanted some spring or something like that, we could add another modifier layer and use, and use something like a delay, which you might be used to with using the MoGraph system. And we can change this from smooth to something like spring. Let's increase that a little bit. And now what we're gonna get when we watch this back is hopefully some nice springy text as it flies into its position. Now, rather than play this in the timeline, one thing I like to do is just a quick hardware render. Shoot this off, shoot this off, and then we'll have a quick look at it. So I'm changing my renderer to hardware. I'm gonna select all frames. Let's close that off. Let's close that off and we'll send it to the picture viewer. I'll give this a second to render and then we'll have a look at what we've got. All right, this is starting to come through now. And as I scrub through the timeline, you're gonna notice how text grows on. And then because of that delay effect, we get this nice jiggle happening through the, and this undulation of size across that spline. And this, is, and this is a pretty cool result considering we've only got the two keyframes just setting that in and out point of the actual scale of our spherical fall off. So let's have a quick look at this again. So that's kind of cool. We almost get this wave ripple out from the center as it follows that spherical field. And already this is kind of cool and I hope it gives you an idea. And I hope this gives you an idea of how you can start to use these, use the fields, use the volume builder. I hope this was a nice snapshot of what the new, of what the new tools are really capable of. Something like this before would have been so complex to try and achieve and to get those smooth joins on the text was an absolute nightmare whenever I tried to achieve it. So I'm super stoked with the new update. I think it's really powerful. I'd love to know what you guys think if you've, and if you've been able to dive in and have a bit of a play yourself. So I've only had my hands on it a couple of months, but already I'm hooked and I'm excited to really try and get some more complex stuff going. All right, thanks guys. I hope you can take something away from that and I'll see you again soon. Cheers. <laughs>